In October of this year, three Michelin star chef Norbert Niederkofler, together with Paolo Ferretti, organized a unique virtual conference called the CARE 2020 Ethical Chef Days. This annual conference is a project conceived by a chef for the chefs that gathers wine and food companies and professionals with the same aim, to take care of the environment, local communities, and the rhythm of nature, promoting an ethical and sustainable approach to cooking. I had the great honor to be invited to participate and speak at this event together with the legendary Yvonne Junard, founder and owner of Patagonia and Patagonia Provisions, a big time hero of mine. I am delighted to be able to share part of Yvonne's wisdom revealed in this intercontinental conversation between the mountains of Wyoming and the Italian Dolomites. I'm sure you'll enjoy his wise words. A few years ago, we decided that we're not working hard enough to save our home planet. And so we changed our mission statement to making the best product and causing no unnecessary harm. We changed it to we're in business to save our home planet. And so what does that mean for us? We, do we just say that and then do nothing or do we actually live that mission statement? So we had to say, okay, with the company that we have, we have four ways of saving the planet. Number one, we're using a lot of agricultural goods like cotton and wool. And so using organic cotton just causes less harm, but it doesn't do the world any good. But if, but if you used regeneratively, organically grown cotton, regenerative means the cotton is grown in a way that builds soil. You know, the United Nations tells us that we have 40 harvests left in the world. That's 40 years left of topsoil and water. Actually, we have less years than that of water. We're running out of water very quickly. So that is a really big thing. But regenerative organic means you build the topsoil. It can't be done on an industrial scale, which means that it employs small farmers around the world. It has to be done on a very small scale, yet it produces more food than industrial agriculture. And so we said, okay, we have to start making all our cotton now regeneratively, organically grown. And so we started in India and with 150 farmers, small farmers who only have less than a hectare. And, and these, these are farmers that, you know, 10 years ago were convinced to do GMO cotton. And it was a complete failure and they had 300,000 Indian farmers commit suicide. Because, you know, if you lose your farm, you lose a crop, there's nothing to live for. And so we convinced them to grow this cotton regeneratively. And so the next year we had 650 farmers and now we have a thousand some. And the first product from that cotton just came out this year. And that's the, that's the, the shorts that my daughter put the label on in the, in the back <laughs> saying vote the assholes out. <laughs> that was the very first regenerative organic product. And we sold out in two weeks, of course. But I, I decided that the best thing we can do to live to our mission statement is to promote regenerative organic agriculture. Secondly, we have to get rid of our evil government that we have here in the States. Thirdly, we have to support organizations that are working on educating third world women in third world countries 
because an educated woman will choose to have less children. And fourthly, we have to save large areas of the wild part of the, what's left of the planet, which, is, which captures carbon and, and makes the oxygen. And so that's the four parts of our mission statement that we're working on. And food, for me, food is my big interest right now. And I see that we're gonna need 50% more food by 2050. That's only 30 years from now. 50% more food, and we're not gonna have any topsoil and water. So what are we gonna do? So that's a big interest of mine. And uh, I've always been interested in food. I mean, my parents, uh, I learned to cook from my parents. I, I, uh, I have a lot of interest in food. And so we started a Patagonia Provisions it's not enough to promote regenerative organic agriculture. Now you have to convince people that it's the right thing to do. So we're taking a step further and producing products. Um, Patagonia Provisions has, uh, I don't know how many, 120 products now that are either regeneratively organically grown or on the way to becoming certified regeneratively organically done and so we're leading by producing these foods and offering them to people and with a good marketing story as to why they should eat those foods our, our number one product now is actually canned mussels from spain a mussel is a perfect product because it's it's grown without any food. You don't have to feed it. You just put it on ropes, hang the ropes down in the water, and they filter feed. And they clean the water and you just leave them alone. I mean, it's as sustainable a product as possible. And then we're doing uh, sardines, anchovies. We're gonna do mullet, uh, mackerel, we're doing, we're using all fish that don't eat other fish. They eat plankton, they eat algae. So it's very sustainable and much healthier too. You know, when you're eating tuna, you're eating a tremendous amount of mercury and heavy metals because that tuna has, you know, has eaten a lot of small fish and, and all those heavy metals move up the food chain. And so, uh, so we're, yeah, we're in the canned fish business. In fact, we're we're doing a million cans of mussels this year. There was there was a study done in the 1930s in Canada. You know, anim, wild animals know what they should eat. When a dog gets sick, he goes out and eats grass. Right? He knows that he needs to eat grass because it's the right thing for him. And a wild animal, they eat what they need to eat. They know intrinsically what they should be eating. And humans have lost that because uh, from a very early age, we feed them sugar and, and canned baby food. And we force this food on them and we, they become addicts to sweet salty, fatty foods. And they did a study in Canada in 1930. Um, they took a bunch of uh, orphan children. And after they were fed, you know, very young, they were fed their milk. When they were ready for solid foods, all they did was put all kinds of different food on a table and let them eat let them choose what they wanted. And the children knew what they wanted to eat and what they needed to eat. And in fact, there was one child who would eat cod liver oil, would drink cod liver oil <laughs> because it had a vitamin 
A or vitamin D deficiency and needed to eat that. And in, in fact, in, in, in uh, West Virginia, in the mountains of Appalachia, in the States, women that are very close to nature and living you know, on farms and stuff, when they're pregnant, they go and they eat clay. They eat clay because they know, oh, I need that. I need the minerals from that clay. Just like a, a deer will find clay banks and eat the clay for the minerals. So when you have a, a life very close to nature, you know intrinsically what you should be eating. And we've lost that. And so we're eating junk food and we're not getting the nutrients that we need to, to be healthy. And of course, we have all these modern diseases like diabetes and various inflammatory diseases because we're not eating the right thing and we're eating foods that have no nutrition. You know, the Stanford University did a study a few years back between studying the nutritional content of organically grown foods and non-organically. So what they did, they just go to the supermarket and they bought organic carrots and non-organic carrots. And they found no difference in the nutrition. So why is that? That's because organic doesn't go far enough. Organic carrots are grown in factory farms. They don't use compost and they use chemical fertilizers. They're grown just like factory carrots. The only difference is they don't spray them with pesticides and insecticides. That's the only difference. But nutrition wise, organic doesn't go far enough. But if you test a carrot that is grown regeneratively where there's, they use cover crops and compost and it's building soil, that carrot has far more nutrition than an organic carrot. So that there's a there's a revolution to be done in in food. We we've tested. We own a, a a buffalo farm in South Dakota, and our buffalo has a choice of eating 300 different plants, and that meat is so much more nutritious than eating beef where the cow eats nothing but hay all winter long one one thing all winter long eating hay or is in a pasture that only has a f three or four different things for it to eat compare that with a cow in the alpine meadow that has maybe 50 different things to eat one of my favorite quotes now is, you are what you eat, eats. <laughs> so when you're eating a beef that is eating only hay, you're eating hay. And we've tested our buffalo compared with other buffalo that are sent to the feedlot to be f fed GMO corn and soybeans, and there's no comparison in the nutrients. And that's just vitamins and, you know, potassium and, and uh, calcium and a few things. We, we know there's 50 different micronutrients that we know about that are good, that are, that we eat. There's 26,000 other micronutrients that we eat that we have no idea why they're there or what they do for us. And they don't exist in an industrially grown food. But nature, nature is not wasteful. Nature is not stupid. There's a reason why there's 26,000 micronutrients. And it's just, we're too stupid to know what each one of those does for us. 
But we do know that they don't exist in an industrially grown food. I mean, this is really exciting. For me, this is, this is I wish I was a scientist, but I'm not. <laughs> I, wish I, I wish I was studying things like that. If you buy here in California, in the Central Valley in California, they grow a lot of table grapes. If you try to make wine from some of those grapes, it's terrible. And in fact, they do Cabernet Sauvignon grapes. They sell them for $800 a pound. Uh, uh, sorry, a ton, $800 a ton. 200 miles further north, the Cabernet Sauvignon grapes sell for as much as $30,000 a ton. So what's the difference in those grapes? It's the terroir, it's the climate, it's the length of the roots. The older the vine is, the more nutrients it can pull up from the soil. It's how it's grown. You know, the, a, uh, a grape plant that is struggling puts out more nutrients than a plant that is being fed and watered every day. In fact, the vineyards in the Napa Valley, they put these lie detectors, you know, like, like the FBI has. They put a lie detector on the plants to tell when it's struggling. And they want it to struggle, but not too much so that when it struggles just enough, they give it some water. You know, here in, uh, in Wyoming, where I am now, we pick blueberries. And this is a terrible blueberry year because it was a very wet year. Plants have egos. <laughs> in a wet year, the, the blueberry plant, oh, I don't have to produce very many berries. I'll put all the energy into leaves and, and roots. And uh, so I get stronger. And, but when there's a drought, it produces tons of berries because it feels like, oh, I might die and I want as many children as I possibly can have. <laughs> so it has an ego. <laughs> and those, it's, uh, it's amazing when you start understanding these, what's going on in plants and animals and, and living and eating in a more natural way. I, I see that as tremendous opportunity. But as far as, you know, the future of the planet, like the COVID thing, people on the planet, that's all. And now there's close to 8 billion. And 20 years ago, a scientists were saying that at the rate that we consume, humans consume, the earth is sustainable at about two and a half billion people. That was, that was 20 years ago. This year, they've changed the numbers to where we're consuming so much now that they figure the earth is sustainable for humans at a billion and a half. That's very sad numbers, let me tell you. So in my own business, I'm going to avoid selling as many of our clothes as possible. I'm going into the clothing rental business. If you're skiing only a month a year, why should you buy an expensive jacket and, and pants to ski one week a year? And then next year it's out of fashion, you throw it away. Why not rent for that one week? And that's, that's, the, that's the way we're looking at things now. Renting, repairing, recycling. And uh, it, I may have a smaller company five years from now than I have now, but I don't care. I never wanted a company anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, one more question. What did your management team said when you said that you're going to, to donate 
all the, the amount of money that you are making on, on Black Friday? Were they very happy about your decision or what did they say to you? <laughs> you know, the idea, this is a few years ago, the idea came to take uh, all our revenue on Black Fr Friday and give it all away to the environment. So the year before we had done, I don't know, three, three million dollars. And so, uh, so we decided to do it. And, you know, it was just, yeah, I can do whatever I want because I, I don't have any stockholders. I don't have any, you know, investors. So I said, yeah, let's do it. And so they, called me at three in the afternoon and said, oh my God, our sales are up to six million. I thought, whoa, <laughs> that's getting up there. And then at six in the evening, it was 10 million, <laughs> 10 million. And I mean, it was went crazy. And we only advertised it on social media like, like three days before. And I'm, th I'm thinking, wow, that's gotten to be a lot of money. And I'm thinking, well, our sales are gonna die for the rest of the Christmas season, you know what happened? Our, well, first of all, 60% of those sales on Black Friday were from new customers that had never bought from us before. So we made incredible number of new customers. We could have, we could have put an ad on the Super Bowl and spent $5 million for 30 seconds and we never would have gotten this many new customers. And then the sales through the Christmas season went through the roof and they've continued ever since. So it was good business. Like I said, whenever we do the right thing, it makes us more money. 